But I, I wanted to, you know, I, I kind of got an aha over the weekend. Um, in, in fact, uh, Greg Palace and I were sitting around talking, and I, it just, like, it hit me. And I, I don't know that I said it to him. I think I might have. Um, but why is it, and this goes back to, you know, the Bundys got released on Friday. Well, they didn't get released because they're facing other charges, but they got acquitted for taking over the Malheur uh, Wildlife uh, Preserve in Oregon. They occupied federal property with guns. And they got off. You got Native Americans who are trying to occupy land which they say a, the, the, uh, the Kapler Treaty of 1851 gave, uh, gives them, or uh, doesn't even give them, that they, they retain the rights to. And you've got a private corporation going after them with dogs and bulldozers and, and now police shooting people with tasers and, and shotguns. They have so-called beanbags, which can still put out an eye. They hit you in the wrong place. They can kill you. They can do really, really bad damage. But that's only half of it. You know, there's clearly a, uh, a, you know, a, a different set of standards with the way that our criminal justice system deals with white guys trying to take on the government versus people of color trying to take on a corporation. And I think, you know, Sue, uh, who runs our, our chat room, made a, you know, a note, made this note, and I think it's a, a really good one. She said, the Standing Rock people are hindering a corporation in its business. The Bundy boys were merely hindering a government department. Big difference in conservative eyes. I think you're right. But now the much larger question. Remember when Clive and Bundy was, had been for, what, 10 years, I guess, for, for quite some time, had been grazing his cows on federal land, ruining the land, and refusing to pay the grazing fee, which was, by the way, about one-fifth of what the normal grazing fee is if you're grazing on somebody else's private land. So we actually, we were willing to subsidize Clive and Bundy, and he didn't want the subsidy, he just wanted it all. And when that standoff happened, what did the news do? What did the news media do? They, did, they went into 24-7 lock, lockdown mode, right? It was all Bundy all the time. White guys taking on the government. White guys with guns pointing their guns at government officials. And what happened? Bundy got his cows back. The police left. Now, it looks like, you know, one or more of them may be facing some criminal charges relating to that. What, two years later? But then on the flip side of this, but, if, you know, again, back to the media. The Bundy boys occupy the wildlife refuge. Every day the media is up there. They're camped out. We're hearing breathless, day-by-day, blow-by-blow reports on CNN, on MSNBC, on Fox, ABC, NBC, CBS, all over the place. But there's no such coverage for what's going on with at, at Standing Rock. There's no such coverage for what's going on with the water protectors, the Native American water protectors who are trying to stop the Dakota Access Pipeline. Why is that? I have a couple of theories. But I th my, my largest theory boils down to one simple and that is that the corporate media in this country, since it was freed in 1987 by Ronald Reagan saying we're no longer going to enforce the, the Fairness Doctrine, which, which did not require if you put a liberal on, you've got to put a conservative. And it did not. The Fairness Doctrine did two things. Number one, it said that if a radio or television station editorializes as the station, and those of you old enough to remember this, remember back in the day, back in the 60s, you know, when the TV, local TV station, the owner of the station would come on and say, I have something to say. In my opinion, you know, this, you know, and usually it had to do with local stuff, you know, should we build a new rec center for the, for the, you know, or a new uh, civic center for the town? 
and then he would be followed by an opposing point of view. The Fairness Doctrine required that. But that's only because it was the station owner. That was one part of it. The other part of it is you must program in the public interest if you want to get your license renewed, radio and television station. And that was defined as actually carrying news. So we used to, you know, we used to have real news. Now we don't have to have real news anymore. Now the, the news divisions, in, and I put those in, in scare quotes because, you know, frankly, I think it's a joke. But in any case, the news divisions of these networks, they're mandated with making money for the network. Now, how do you make money? You get eyeballs, number one, and you sell advertising based on the number of eyeballs, number two. So who's got the most money in this country? White people. Right? The average wealth of a white family in America is around 80 grand. The average wealth of a black family is around five grand. And the average wealth of a Native American family is around zero. Who's got the money? Who's going to buy the products? White people, by and large. So who, if you're programming a television network, a news network, even a news network, because it's not really news, it's infotainment. And it's got to get that buzz. It's got to make money. And you got a story with a whole bunch of white people in it. White people want to want to know what's going on with other white people, even crazy white people like the Bundys. But Native Americans, white people in this country would rather forget that we are explicitly guilty of an attempted, and not just attempted, of genocide, both physical and cultural. A nearly successful genocide. And in the case of probably at least 100 different tribes and languages, a successful genocide. White people don't want to acknowledge that. So we got white people television. And white people television is really not all interested in what's going on with Indians. Because other white people aren't going to want to watch it because they don't care. They'd much rather see what's going on with white people. And even, you know, even the coverage with issues like, you know, the Black Lives Matter, it's like, okay, and how does the white politician react to this? Tell me I'm, tell me I'm crazy here. This is the Tom Hartman program. Or am I on to something? I mean, is this, is this the institutional racism? It's really just all about the money that's in our media? <laughs> 